All right, today I'm going to show you how to download Cade, which is the desktop version of Ken Q Analysis for Q Methodology. I am at the Sean Banasik website, who is the wonderful person who makes all this software. So just put your cursor over the Cade screen. It says Description and Downloads. We click there. <clears throat> we get to Sean's Git hub page which has lots of wonderful things on it and we scroll down <clears throat> and here we have download links <clears throat> so Mac OS Linux and Windows portable or Windows installer so I'm gonna pick Windows installer going to download it into my downloads and we're ready so click on that here we'll just open it hopefully yeah, maybe we'll show in folder it should open when it's done too yeah taking its good old time so there's Arcade. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Right, so it's installing. Please wait. <clears throat> Obviously, I have a Windows machine but it's just as easy to do all of these things on a Mac, I'm sure. Not a Mac person. All right, so it's still thinking. <coughs> and voila. Automatically makes a link on my desktop. But here we go, <clears throat> and maybe now I want to input something, right? So I'll go and, right? You may have used one of the, right, the page that has the ability for you to create a file, right? <clears throat> Which is, so this is for online, right? <clears throat> Totally recommend using the web configurator if you're going to do the web sort. And here's the data input and conversion. So, right, this allows you to create a spreadsheet or you could do it by hand, right, whether it's a CSV or an Excel, I mean, <clears throat> CADE, right, I, PQ method, I um, used the EQ sort. So I have some things in JSON. So I'm going to click on load JSON file and I'm gonna to have to go and find my file. Oh, I don't remember if I have it in. I think I might have my study in. There it is. <clears throat> so let's see, oh, that's an old one. Uh, this is the one that I used most recently. Okay, maybe it's not in there. All right, well, we'll I guess that is it. So we'll use that. <clears throat> Notice it says select participant ID. That just means that, hey, my ID is there. Then next I have to load my text file. There's my little text file. I have to input my project name. Right, so I'm just going to call this example. And it just so happens that in this study, right, uh, it was a force grid, but if they wanted to, they could ignore the grid and, and sort it however they wanted. A nice new feature in the EQ sort. So because of that, I need to say that it's unforced because I have some sorts that don't conform. Something that we just literally don't worry about. We don't have to do anything to those sorts. But 
we do have to let the program know what the original sort pattern was, go to correlations, say calculate correlations, there they are, right? And then I can just go to factors, right? I could go to centroid factors, pick brown, and then decide how many I want to extract, up to eight. And there they happen to be. <clears throat> I could rotate, right? I could do judgmental rotation or Veramax. We'll just show you real quick. I could say submit and then Veramax. It's applied. Now I go to loadings and there are my loadings. <clears throat> I can auto flag and see what I have. Notice that it's no longer in numerical order. Instead, it's set up this way. Some of these sorts, even though I have required majority of common variants, there are a couple I would uncheck, like number 63 here, 0.69 on factor one, but 0.419 on factor two, Right, so I want the clean loadings so that A, they won't be highly correlated, the different factors, but also because I want the best, right, picture of these different views that are emerging. So I just go through, I usually, my, my, my kind of default without calculating it is about 0.33. So I'm going to, Again, unclick some of these just because they're not that clean. They're somewhat mixed. Those aren't too bad. I don't think they're, I forgot to look over there. Man, I don't know if I'm going to keep factor four yet. Keep scrolling down. There's my factor two. In this case, it didn't click this one. Check that one as, but sometimes, right, it doesn't. So here's 0 0.51, 0 0.56, so I'll unclick. Again, we just want the cleanest loadings. It's not about how many people are on a factor. It's about getting clarity. And then here's factor three. Uh, see, this is 0 0.51, 0 0.55. Again, you just need to go through. Don't. It's just an algorithm. And <clears throat> so we don't need to put all of our faith into an algorithm. It's not absolute. Right? So keep going through. Maybe I check this one. Uncheck this one. Uncheck that one. <laughs> All right, and it didn't check this one. This one's the only negative loader here, and so I'm just going to ignore that. It could be that they just, right, did it backwards. It's often possible, and then I'm going to send table to the output, then I click on output, right? I want to select all my factors. I'm going to submit. I could download everything as an Excel file. I can look at my factor characteristics, including correlations, even though I cleared this up a little bit. They're a little highly correlated, right? But whether or not I keep this solution or examine, right? some other solutions, which I usually do, right? <clears throat> I don't usually worry so much about the correlations as long as the things that um, participants said post-sort, right? I want to not lose some of those details. There might be some really interesting things, right? That if I have fewer factors, I might lose. Here's my factor table. Here's my distinguishing statements. Maybe. There we go. 
I can sort by number, I could sort by z-score, right? I can set my um, significance level. I can download this, but I don't need to because they're all part of, right, the Excel file. So this just gives us a little peek at my different factors. And then my favorite part, the factor visualizations. I usually go into the display options. I like to see the numbers, right? So update that, click on the view again, and then click on display composite factors. I really like these, these theoretical sorts. They're very helpful to me, especially as I am deciding about keeping or not keeping a certain solution. You can go down, you can download these pictures. They're not part of the Excel file. So I usually download each Excel file if I think this is a solution might be a keeper. And then I download each of the factor visualizations. I usually break them into, into a folder just because that's how I am. Right? I can look at the project log. That just reminds me about right, my extraction and, right, my rotation, how many factors I had, and then I can clear the project. That just means that I'm going to clear, right, <clears throat> the data and the analyses. <clears throat> I could have just gone back here, right, and very simple to go in and, right, just remove that set of analyses. So you, it's very easy to just go in and repeatedly change, right, extractions, how many factors you've extracted, etc.